so today we're going to be setting up a very awesome Nintendo Switch emulator, which is of course Citron for Retrobat. So I've not uploaded a Retrobat Switch emulation guide for a little while, and a lot's actually changed in the world of emulation, that Switch emulation and Retrobat too. So let's get into this. What we're going to need to do first of all is of course download the emulator itself. I'll leave the link in the description for this. Now this is the Citron website, and as we can see just here, we've got 85% of games within the Switch library which are actually playable, 60% of which are absolutely perfect so it says, and this emulator gets frequently updated. So first of all then, what we're going to do is just go to download. Citron Windows Canary Refresh. This is currently on 0.6.1. If we just wait for that one to download, and that's downloaded. Okay, so a lot of you is going to be wondering why I've just downloaded this outside of Retrobat. And the reason why that is, is that Retrobat, you can download some emulators within the system itself. But other emulators, especially Switch emulators, you need to do it outside of Retrobat. So anyways, we've got our emulator, which is just here. This is in a zip folder. So we're just going to need to extract this one. So I'm going to right click and unpack this with WinRAR. Just go to extract here. And there we go. We can now delete the zip folder of Citron. We no longer need that one. So we need to put Citron into the correct folder within Retrobat. So I'm going to right click on the Retrobat shortcut. Go to open file location. We're going to find an emulators folder here. And in here we're going to find a folder named Citron. Just double left click. Now we're going to open that Citron folder we just extracted. And what we're going to do with this is just drag and drop all of the contents inside of the Retrobat Emulator Citron folder. I'm going to press Ctrl on my keyboard, press A together. Everything's now highlighted. If I just drag and drop, there we go. Next thing we're going to need to do then is let's just delete that Citron folder on my desktop just so we know where we are. No longer need that one. Okay, next thing we're going to need to do is open up the emulator. But before we do that, what we're going to do is quickly take a look at the prod keys. So I've got prod keys just here. And again, what I'm going to do with this is just right click on it and unpack it or extract it. Extract here. And there we go. So I'm now going to delete that zip folder. Now that prod keys folder, what I'm going to do is just drag and drop this inside of the emulator Citron folder. That simple. And we also got the firmware zip folder as well. So what I'm going to do with this is again, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to simply call this one firmware. Now I'm going to drag that firmware.zip folder inside of that folder I've just created. If we go inside, we're going to extract the content. So right click, WinRAR, extract here. Once this has been extracted, we're going to just delete the zip folder just to get rid of unnecessary folders. Okay, now what we need to do is open up the emulator itself. So we're going to go to citron.exe. And here we go. This is the actual GUI. So of course, we're going to get into Retrobat in a minute, but let's just set this up first. We're going to go to Tools, Install Decryption Keys. And from here, this should point us straight into the Retrobat Emulator Citron folder. If you don't find this gone inside of here, then you need to manually find this yourself. In which case, it will likely be in your C drive, Retrobat, Emulator folder, and inside, you're going to find your Citron folder here. So, we're going to install the prod keys. If we go inside, prods.keys, decryption keys were successfully installed. Just okay this. Okay, so next up, we're going to need to install the firmware. So what I'm going to do is actually drag that firmware folder inside of that Retrobat Emulator Citron folder. So everything's together now. If we go back into the emulator GUI, we're going to install this by going to tools, install firmware. And this should then take me back into the correct location where my firmware is. If we go inside, select folder, install in firmware. Okay, excellent. So what we're going to need to do next is put our games into place. Now this emulator supports both .nsp files as well as .xci files. As we can see just here, it's actually got the ROMs switch location into place. This is actually corresponding with Retrobat. So I need to go back to the Retrobat directory. And I'm going to go to ROMs, and here I'm going to look for Switch. 
And here's Switch. Now, inside of my games folder, I've of course got Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Now, we got the main base file itself. This is a game, and I'm also going to show you how to install update. What we're going to do is just drag the main file inside of the ROM switch folder. And what I'm going to do is leave the update file outside of this. Otherwise, if we put both inside of this ROM switch directory, then when we open up Retrobat, you're going to find two files for the same game. And you don't want that. So, what we're going to do then is now go back to the emulator itself. And as we can see, because I dropped the game inside of there, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is now displaying here, which is good. What we need to do then is actually install the update. So, to do this, we're going to go to File, Install Files to NAND. And from here, we're going to look for the update file for this game. So, it's on my desktop and it's still in that games folder. Here's my update file, double left click, install, and that's now been installed. Okay, and under add-on section, we can see this is now updated to 1.0.1. Okay, so we're finished now, and what we're going to do is open up Retrobat. Okay, so inside of Retrobat, we should now find a Switch folder. Here we go. And here's my game. Now, we can see lots of letters and numbers and everything else. And if we look for artwork for this game, I'm going to hold down onto my A button where I can actually download artwork for this manually. If I go to scrape, there we go. That's just an easier way should you find it difficult to scrape the normal way. Just hold down onto the A button and go to scrape from there. We're going to download the artwork then for this. And there we go. Awesome stuff. Now let's open up the game for the first time. And it's going to say emulator is missing. So what we need to do is go to view options. I'm going to press select button on my controller to do this. If we go to advanced system options, emulator, I'm going to find Citron. If I select Citron and come out by pressing my B button, open up Super Mario Bros. Wonder once again. And here we go, we're straight into the game. Let me just remind you that on your first time of playing Switch games with Citron, your games might appear to be laggy. Second time around should be absolutely fine. Okay, so if I hold on to my hotkeys, which I'm pressing start and select for, that's going to exit me outside of the game. Now, we can actually change some settings within Retrobat for the emulator itself. Again, by pressing a select button, or you can do it per game by pressing the A button. What we can do from here is go to advanced game options. We can change the internal resolution. You can bump this up to, as it says, eight times, but I really wouldn't recommend that. I would personally bump this up to around three to four times, depending on how strong your computer components are. But for this, I'm going to just leave it to auto. We also got a vertical sync option here. If we go to game aspect ratio, we can change it from default, which is 16 by 9. Don't put this to 4 by 3 because Switch games are designed for 16 by 9. We also got options here for video, so if we go to visual rendering, we can apply anti-aliasing just here, such as FXAA and MSAA, which is going to take away jagged edges around sprites and objects within the games. Personally, I think this is fine as auto. We've got a scaling filter where we can add a little bit of blur to games if they look a little bit pixelated, but again, personally leave this to auto. If we go to anastrophic filtering, we can apply anastrophic filtering, but of course this is going to start wearing at your computer if you have got a lower end computer. If we go down to drivers, video, now if you're finding that your games are producing a black screen, then it's always worth popping this onto Vulkan, but generally with auto selected, it's okay in most cases. 
And that's it for today's Citron and Retrobat setup guide. So if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. And if you're also new to my channel, do check out the Retrobat playlists, which is going to be linked in the comments section below. It's quite incredible how long I've covered Retrobat for and people will still ask for a particular setup guides well it's quite likely i've already done it in the last couple of years anyways until next time stay retro